running with the devil. I'll tell you about it. What's going on everyone? Welcome to Movie Emporium's movie review of Late Night with the Devil. The news film from the Karens Brothers. So Late Night with the Devil is a found footage style movie that is in the vein of like a Jerry Springer if he were to meet the Exorcist style late night talk show a film, which is about a character named Jack Delroy who is a down on, the, down on his luck kind of dotted individual who hosts a show called Night Owl and he's recently just lost his wife. He's in the process of like trying to ramp up his show and during Halloween he hires or he brings on a psychic and of course he brings on a skeptic and then he brings on these two individuals that the young girl is apparently possessed and of course the parapsychologist is the one trying to help the girl get rid of this demon and as if you've seen the trailer not to spoil too much but things start to happen in this movie where you start to question the reality that's happening as well as whether this girl is really possessed whether the skeptic is able to prove that it's a fake or what exactly is going on in the process things start to go out of control things start to happen and jack dalroy is in for the night of his life when it comes to his show night owl so that's kind of the synopsis about whether this is a real story or you you know in essence of like the film itself and when it's becoming you know with it being found footage and stuff like that so late night with the devil has been around since south by southwest in 2023 it garnered amazing reviews says like one of the best horror films in years it's a film i've been looking forward to it's not something i put in my top 10 just because i didn't really know much about it but once the teaser released finally in 2024 and now it's releasing in theaters uh this pretty much shot up to like one of my most anticipated films because you know I love the idea of taking a light, late night talk show using some demonic possession stuff and then having it kind of go out of control, spiral out of control, you know, watching individuals kind of react to that. It's just, you know, it is what it is. It's something that, you know, could be entirely unique. And that's from what I hear is that that's exactly what it was. But you never know what, what you're getting when it comes to these types of films. And on top of that, after the success of, you know, Talk to Me, which was from uh, two Australian brothers, we're getting another set of brothers who are Australian are bringing a film that is supposed to be totally and wholly unique when it comes to the horror genre. So, you know, this also has David Dasmalshi in it. It has Ian Bliss. It has a very interesting, unique cast that, you, you know, maybe new people or so on and so forth. So the question really remains is, is this film worth watching? Is it is it as hyped as it should be? And um, I'll put it this way. Um Mandy to me is one of the best horror films I've seen in like the last 15, 20 years since like Cabin in the Woods. It's great. It's unique. It's original. Uh, it's one of the most inventive films I've seen in quite a while. I think this film is either as good or better than Mandy because this film is incredible. It's horrifying. It's disturbing. And it's uniquely interesting. Like I love like especially like stop look at stop motion. One of the films i talked about earlier this year that's a film that also is very uniquely interesting and it kind of takes the horror genre and does something really different with it but this does something completely different with the horror genre is something that i haven't seen hardly ever which is something new and original and kind of authentic when it comes to how the the horror genre is used you know you have you can have like your typical pg-13 conjuring universe horror film and that's perfectly all right but this film is just something completely else. This is a film of pure genius, a pure masterpiece. This is a film that, or a movie that completely took me by surprise, even though I was really intrigued and interested and kind of anticipating it. This movie is awesome. It really is. It actually kept me on the edge of my seat for the whole 95 minutes. And it's a, and it's a piece of uh, film genius. It really is. I, I absolutely love this film. I really did. It's, it's a film that really takes itself, and I'm trying not to spoil anything because it goes into some pretty crazy territory, but there is some things in this movie that actually caught me off guard, that took me by surprise, and really made me appreciate that there are still truly uniquely interesting filmmakers out there that are willing to kind of take a genre and kind of spin it on its head. You know, you look at something like, you know, you look at something like Cabin in the Woods or the original Halloween or even Halloween Season of the Witch or, you know, any of these types of films, and it's just... There, when people do it and they do it right, you get stuff like this. I mean, watching this film play out or watching this movie play out, and it starts out kind of like a uh, like a seventies, nineteen seventies kind of uh, talk show, late night talk show. We get 
a little bit of like uh, Jack Dalroy's history and kind of how he leads up to scandal. Then we get into this like really cool kind of like very 1970s talk show, variety show, late night show or whatever you call, want to call it, Night Owl. We see kind of like, you know, the skeptic and we see the, you know, because this takes place during Halloween, we see like the skeptic and we see the the psychic and stuff like that. And it, it's just a really cool aesthetic. It really is like how the directors put filters on to make it really feel like a 1970s TV show, how everybody reacts to everything, how the cameras work. And it just it, it is very much doing with the set pieces and set design and kind of the clothing and how people are acting. It does it really, really well. And then when you go behind the scenes, when it cuts to commercial, it goes to black and white, like kind of like a documentarian type footage setting in a lot of respects. And you see kind of the nuts and bolts of how people are truly reacting, how, you know, when you see what's on the screen, it's not necessarily what happens behind the screen. And then when the things start happening that kind of make this this story kind of move into like weird different directions, you see how, how the main characters and the main actors react to everything. It's really, truly impressive to watch. And it really does a nice job. And the, the Karen's brothers or Karen's brothers, sorry for mispronounce that, they do a really authentic approach to just making it a truly unsettling film when it comes to like what they're presenting. And I got to give them a lot of credit for that. I really do. You know, <laughs> watching... The, the skeptic go, here's $100,000 I will give to anybody that can prove or can disprove my theories that there is no really demonic possession or anything like that. And you see it kind of in footage like that. And then you bring on this young girl and this woman who's a psychologist and the one possessed. And you start to see kind of how things project. And you see how the psychic Ian Bliss's character, who's amazing in this movie, how he is able to, he's, he's trying to disprove everything. And kind of how his character arc happens. It's, it's really, really well done. And once again, as the movie moves along to its eventual third act ending, you're starting to question, like, what exactly is real? What exactly is not? And when it finally concludes to its, you know, to its eventual ending, you're like on the edge of your seat going, this is insane watching, you know, how they kind of deconstruct the, the horror genre and how they deconstruct what truly is like in your brain and how, what are you being manipulated and how you're being manipulated. And it really is, it really is awesome. There's a scene in here where the Ian Bliss character, the Carmichael or whatever his name is, he basically, uh, as you can see in the back, uh, this is the reason I'm using my uh, Twilight Zone background is because he uses the hypnotizing, like the the spinning circle or whatever. And like stuff starts to happen and it really starts to question your reality of what exactly is true and what is not. And it's done to perfection. It really is. I was so impressed with what I was watching. And there's scenes in this movie that rival anything in horror that you will see and, you, and your mouth will be truly a gape, a gasp and a gape because you're, you're like, oh my God, is that, am I seeing that? Is that really happening? Um, it's, it's really, it's really crazy and really great. Now, when it comes to the ending, I don't want to spoil too much, but it gets, it goes places and it does things. And then it does something else that I wasn't expecting. I was expecting the movie. You'll get to a point where you expected the movie to end there, but then it continues and you're wondering what exactly is happening, why it's happening, for what reasons are the directors using this particular subset of stuff? Is it really this part? It really is a thing that might confuse people, so some people might not be on board with it. But I never really question, like, is this right for this movie? Is this wrong for this movie? It really is, like, an incredible thing to watch. And David Dasmalshi and just once, approved, once again proves and he's just a very talented individual, a very talented actor, a very you know, up and coming a list style, uh, actor who's willing to do stuff that's really different. You know, he'll do this and then he'll do like the suicide squad or he'll do Ant-Man or just, he's a very talented actor that really has come into his own and is just a very unique individual. And I, uh, I really appreciate what he's doing within this movie, like how he's, he's smarmy and slimy, but he also has a soft edge to him, but he's also dealing with some really dark stuff in his life. And there, it's just a really dimensional character that plays out in, all different types of whatever, whether it be on screen when he has his persona or when it's the black and white stuff or when it gets to the eventual conclusions where you start questioning like what exactly is happening. And uh, yeah, David das Dasmalshian, this is, you know, if I, if it were me, this would be an Oscar nominated role because he's so good in it. But I don't think, I don't think Hollywood and <laughs> the critics are going to give him the, 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 the critical uh, darling he deserves for this film. So he's really good, really Oscar worthy performance. And yeah, late night with the devil is an absolutely astonishing film. It's one of my favorites of the year it is definitely worth watching. It's very disturbing and violent. So be aware it does things that might disturb you might make you uncomfortable. But if you like stuff like this, 
you like good horror films, you like good unique horror films, I 100% recommend Late Night with the Devil from the Karens Brothers. So 100% recommend and definitely worth a watch. So there you go. Anyways, with that said, thank you so much for watching in the comments below. Did you see this movie? If you haven't seen it, are you looking forward to it? It is like 100% on Rotten Tomatoes right now. So, you know, there you go. But let me know in the comments below if you see it or what you think of it. Try not to spoil the third act because this is a technically non-spoiler review. So please be aware that some people haven't watched it yet. But otherwise, but thank you so much. If you like what you see on this channel, hit the subscribe button to join Movie Emporium. Hit that notification bell at the top to find us coming next. If you like this video, awesome. Hit that like button. And as always, we'll see you guys on.